Hi everyone, um, this is our baby boy Jackson um, and he is four weeks old today and so I thought I would share with you his birth story. Um, it's a very positive birth story, um, it's specifically a home birth story as well um, and I know how much I really loved and got great comfort and inspiration during my pregnancy from reading, listening to, and watching um, positive birth stories. Um, so I thought I would share ours with you as well. Two warnings for you. Um, there is going to be some footage of the birth um, near the end of my story. Um, it is not graphic. Um, you don't see any nudity or anything like that. Um, it's very calm. There's no screaming. Um, but just a warning for you in case you're not ready to see something like that. Um, and also a second warning would be um, if you have had a difficult birth yourself or are dealing with um, birth trauma in any way, um, just really have a think whether you feel this will be a positive experience for you to listen to. Um, my experience was a very positive birth experience, but I completely recognise that's not the case for all births. I know my first birth was definitely not like this. Um, and so just really have a think about whether you're ready to listen to a story like this before, before you continue to watch. Um, I don't want to upset anyone. Um, and I don't want to bring up any negative memories for anyone else. Um, but again, I'll state this is a very positive story. I am still four weeks on on such a high of how it all went um and I just simply can't believe that I got this dream like birth uh it was just incredible um so first things first if you had watched my pregnancy vlogs you'll know I went over my due date um and in fact Jackson wasn't born until 41 weeks and three days pregnant um, and I was honestly happy to continue to let him go even further beyond that. Um, I'd had chats with the birth team um, in my local NHS area because I was having an NHS home birth. Um, my NHS trust here in North Bristol has a dedicated home birth team. Um, so home birth is very much supported in my area for low risk women. Um, and I felt very supported from day one when I said I wanted a home birth. Um, I was so supported all the way through. In fact, when I was then overdue, I had a um, phone call with the birth choices team at our local hospital and they were going to continue to support me in my choice to continue to plan for a home birth beyond 42 weeks. And then a bit further on from that, if home birth no longer became an option, um, they were still going to support me to have a post dates birth spontaneous birth in the local birth center where usually post 42 weeks you would have to deliver in the delivery suite so I was really pleased that um, my choices were discussed fully and listened to and respected and supported um, I cannot speak highly enough of the birth team especially all of the home birth midwives and community midwives I met um, during this pregnancy they made this experience so wonderful um, so yeah, he was born at 41 plus three days, completely spontaneously. Um, basically, the night before, which was a Wednesday night, I had gone into the local hospital. Um, this is the first time I've ever had to do something like this, but I had noticed that his movements had become a bit reduced that day. I could still feel him moving, um, so I wasn't, you know, too concerned, but he just wasn't moving as much or as strongly as he normally did. So I went in um, and I was in there for a couple of hours just because the waiting, um, the waiting room was so full. So um, there were a lot of people there. So I waited there, got checked out. He passed um, the criteria within 15 minutes because as soon as I got there, of course, and sat down in the waiting room, he started moving like normal. <laughs> but um, I was glad to be there to just make sure that everything was fine just in case. Um, and I never would have slept that night had I not gone in and got him checked. So he passed the criteria on the... Um, on the monitors 
within 15 minutes and whilst I was on there they noticed they could see on like the CTG monitoring that I was having a few surges and I was like oh yeah like I'd been getting Braxton Hicks my entire third trimester so you know it didn't bother me um and so that at this point I was 41 plus two days pregnant and of course they came around and they spoke to me again about induction and I said you know I've already spoken to birth choices and I'm not ready for induction just yet and we've discussed what I would like um, induction wise if we choose to go down that route but we're not doing that yet and they were completely respectful with that. Um, I did then actually ask for a, a membrane sweep. It had been in my plan not to have one um, but in that moment I think I had thought about it my concern with him with his reduced movements had made me make the decision I think as well I was really ready to meet him I really felt like labor wasn't that far away and um, I just decided to have one some people may not agree with that decision but um, for me I had thought about it um, completely and fully and decided um, to have one myself then and I don't regret that decision and straight away after that I started having um, surges every five minutes until I then got home. I got home at I think like 11.30 at night and I got into bed and had a fairly good night's sleep. And then when I woke up in the morning, I couldn't feel any surges straight up. But as I was started to get my daughter ready for preschool, um, I started to feel some light surges, um, really light, um, nothing to really note down. Um, in fact, I was like, these could still be these could be just Braxton Hicks and I continued to think that for most of the day um, <laughs> uh, even once the midwives were here I was still questioning is this real labor or is this a false start like um, I was yeah <laughs> I didn't know what to think because I hadn't had spontaneous labor with my daughter um, I'd had an induction with her so I'd never gone into labor spontaneously before um, so I didn't quite know what to expect anyway um, Got my daughter ready for preschool, dropped her off, came back home, um, and then I ducked out to Tesco to grab a few things. And while I was there, I did feel more surges, um, and I felt like they were maybe getting regular and maybe slightly stronger. So when I got home, which was about 10.30 in the morning, I then started recording my surges on the Freya app. They were roughly seven minutes apart, and like I said, still very light, completely manageable. Um, but yeah, I, I whacked on Harry Potter on the TV and um, was just bouncing on my um, pregnancy ball. At roughly 11.30, I had a surge that came with a little bit of pressure in my, uh, in my butt. <laughs> and um, that made me think that it could possibly be early labor and not just Braxton Hicks, because I remembered that pressure from my first birth. Surges are still coming between five and seven minutes at the moment regularly and they're completely manageable. Again, I'm still watching Harry Potter, um, but me and my husband do start kind of like setting up the living room a little bit, which is going to be our birth space. So we inflated our birth pool that we'd hired. Um, we didn't fill it up yet though, um, just inflated it, um, got all my other birth bag and birth kit downstairs, all that kind of thing. And then at 12.15, I called the home birth midwives team because they had said said they had said to give them an early call just to give a heads up especially the second time mum things can progress quite quickly so gave them a call at 12 15 and um, like I said I said to them as well these are very manageable they are getting regular and they are getting slightly stronger but still very very manageable and um, I'm not in any pain or anything like that um, so they said to give them a call back in about an hour which I did and and by this point, when I'm giving them a call back, I am starting to have to stand and sway while leaning against the sofa while going through each surge. Um, and I am kind of starting to struggle to talk through them at this point. But again, still completely manageable, especially with the fray wrap. I found that super helpful to help me breathe through the surges. And that was like absolute key. I continue to keep that position of um, leaning kind of over the back of the sofa and swaying during each surge I kept that up until I got in the pool I think maybe a couple of surges I was lent over my birth ball while leaning uh, while kneeling on the ground but the most comfortable I felt was um, 
leaning over the standing and leaning over the back of the sofa and swaying making sure I had like free movement almost like dancing through the surge like as things got more intense as well I was like rolling my neck and my shoulders out during it because I was feeling a lot of tension there and I knew if I relaxed my body um specifically like relaxing my jaw as well so rolling everything out trying to unclench my shoulders all that kind of thing during each surge and just letting it happen letting letting it take over um and that really really helped I feel like it really helped things progress quickly so at 2 p.m I'm on the phone with one of the home birth midwives um the senior midwife Mary and she hears me have a surge and she said look we're gonna we're gonna send some people out to you just to see how you're doing and so I think it was at quarter to three, Mary, who I'd spoken to on the phone, and a student midwife called Rhea arrived, and they were brilliant. And um, just as they were they were arriving, my husband was leaving to go pick up our daughter from preschool. I had on my birth plan that I wanted minimal cervical checks, um, and they did. So they did ask me. They said, "Did I want one?" And at that point, I accepted because I was thinking. I was still unsure whether this was real labor or whether it was a false start. Um, so I accepted one and they said I was a very stretchy three with a very favorable cervix. So this was at 3 p.m., um, which was wonderful. And like I said, I'm still really managing through all these surges at this point. Um, I'm talking to the midwives, um, offering them a cup of tea, all that kind of thing. Um, during the surges, I am having to stop and sway and um, focus on my breathing. Um, but still all in all wonderful my daughter and husband get home from preschool just after three quarter past three three thirty or something like that and uh, my daughter is full of energy and um, so basically my husband is he keeps her in the kitchen with him while he's cooking dinner and also the midwives just decide to stay out of my way kind of leave me to it so all four of them are in the kitchen kind of chatting my husband's cooking cooking dinner um, my daughter is entertaining the midwives bit by being absolutely hilarious and showing them every single one of her toys I think um, and I'm in the living room I'm just listening to my hypnobirthing app still the Freya app and swaying through these surges and I'm having a bit of Lucozade and um, having some of my sour gummies because <laughs> I'm a very big sweet tooth I think just after 4 p.m. I decide I need something else to help me through. So I whack on my TENS machine, which I hired as well alongside the birth ball. And it is amazing. Like it is the best thing that I've had. Um, I, I never used one in my first birth and I wish I had because it was so, so good. Whacking the boost on the TENS during the surges was absolutely phenomenal. And I kept that TENS machine on um, until I got in the birth pool later on. So I put it on at 4 p.m. and I got in the pool at 7. So I had it on for three hours. And um, you know what? I realized after I only got to like level four, like there's different settings. There's 15 levels and I only got to four. <laughs> and so that goes to show like how well this TENS machine helped me cope during the surges. Because if I only had it on level four and I could have had it on level 15 and it was doing brilliant things for me. Um, yeah, it was wonderful. I A huge tip would be from me to you if you're about to give birth get a tense machine hire one buy one whatever just they're fabulous <laughs> um about 5 30 i lose my mucus plug and um we are aware that i still haven't like had my waters break or anything but not worried about that at all because i know like they could break when baby's born like um not everyone's waters break in early labor um i don't know if you knew that <laughs> um so I'm really moving my body during each surge at this point. Like I'm really working on my breathing. I'm working on kind of swaying, dancing, which I kind of learned this from my pregnancy yoga class, um, Bloom Yoga here in Bristol, um, Horfield, if you are around this area, she, Kate is wonderful. Um, and also from um, Pop That Mama on Instagram, TikTok, um, she advises like almost dancing through surges and that really helped me so uh, i think it was roughly 6 p.m the midwives hint to my husband that it might be a good idea to fill up the pool now which i'm really glad they hinted to him because oh buddy you got some gas because apparently he had said to them when they asked him how long do you think that's going to take to fill up and he said mm, 10 minutes 
<laughs> it took an hour. <laughs> Um, so very glad that he started filling it up at six and, um, I got into it at seven. Um, he took our daughter upstairs at about 6.30 and started getting her to bed. Uh, she had been prepared in case she was awake for the birth. Um, but because it was close to her bedtime, we just thought we'd put her to bed anyway. I remember when my husband was taking her upstairs to bed, all I wanted to do was give her a big cuddle because I knew it would be the last time I saw her as my only child. And, um... You know, I just turned four year old. Uh, she decided she didn't want a hug tonight from mummy, which, you know, complete body autonomy. Sure, you can say no, that's fine. But it kind of broke my heart a little. <laughs> I didn't let her know that though. I was like, oh yeah, no, that's fine. All right, good night, sweetie. And inside, I'm like, oh, my baby girl. Um, I think that kind of marked for me a different stage into my labor. And it's very interesting because that is when the midwives have actually noted down active labor from. Um, I never had another cervical examination, so they've just classed it on from what they saw from me um, and my surges and that kind of thing. So that is where they have marked down active labor from, from um, 6.45 or 7 p.m. Yeah, 6.45 p.m. Um, and so I think it's at that point that I finally accept that I am in labor <laughs> and uh, I decide to get in the pool. So I'm in the pool at 7 p.m. Um, and it feels amazing. Like the pool, the water just feels so relaxing and so wonderful and it is such a great pain reliever. Um, things have gotten more intense by this point and um, yeah, definitely, definitely feeling the intensity. Um, but still coping, um, which I'm very pleased about because in my first birth, I did not feel like I was coping and that mentally really got me down. This time around was so different. Um, I felt positive the whole way. I start using wooden combs in my hands um, since I don't have the TENS machine on anymore. Um, so I'm squeezing them to help with um, pain relief. And my husband, because I'm not listening to my hypnobirthing app anymore, because I didn't want my phone and my headphones near the water, obviously, he asked if I want some music on, thinking I'll say, pop on some meditative music. Um, instead, I say, yes, please. And I ask him to whack on my musical playlist, which is all Hamilton, Encanto, Moana, The Greatest Showman, and In the Heights, original Broadway cast. Um, and we are jamming out in the birth pool. My husband's next to me. He's a huge Hamilton fan as well. Um, for some reason I forgot to shuffle the playlist. So it went through like all of the Hamilton songs I have on that playlist first. Um, so that was all my like active, really intense labor was all to Hamilton and still me and my husband between surges, we're like rapping to Hercules Mulligan's raps in Yorktown and um, I'm jamming out to my favorite, favorite song from Hamilton, Satisfied. Um, we were just having the best time. The midwives were laughing, like they were very, um, they were very amused at their choice of music. <laughs> so we're having a brilliant time. Um, obviously during the surges, I am really focusing on my breathing and really trying to work through them and they are getting very intense at this point. Um, but I'm just in such a good vibe. I'm in such a good zone and, um, yeah, just having a great time really. <laughs> I'm jamming out to Hamilton. Um, at 7.30, the midwives have a shift change. And while I'm really sad to have Mary and Rhea leave, I am over the moon to see Two midwives walk in the door who I have already previously met. So Sophie, who was an absolute angel that I met on the day I had a consultant appointment. You can, um, I talk about all this in my third trimester pregnancy vlog, but she absolutely supported me and helped me and listened to me and advised me on a day that I really needed it. And um, she was just brilliant and an absolute lifesaver that day. So I was so happy to see her and also Emily, who I had seen at my most recent midwife um, antenatal appointment. So it was really lovely to see two midwives walk in that I already had met and um, who were absolutely lovely. And uh, they come in and join, join the musical party. Um, 
uh, by 8 p.m. Um, I am really feeling the intensity and the combs and the water aren't quite doing enough for me at this point so I ask the midwives for some gas and air and I'd had in my birth plan to not ask me if I want it but wait for me to ask them and they did that and it was wonderful I didn't even realize they had brought it in I didn't even see them bring it in um, so I actually when I asked for the gas and air I said oh did you bring gas and air do you have it <laughs> And they were like, yes, 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 we'll get it set up for you. And so from then on, I'm using that during the surges. During the next while, I'm feeling a lot of pressure during each surge, like a lot of pressure. And while I'm not pushing, I am just um, letting my body relax with each surge and focusing on letting every single muscle in my body relax so that baby can move himself down. Um, so I'm not pushing, but I'm certainly not stopping my body by tensing up and not allowing baby to move down. I'm really envisioning that lowering movement. I'm really envisioning that in my head. Um, and at 9 p.m., I officially, so after one hour of gas and air and that pressure feeling, um, I officially... I officially move into the second stage of labor of pushing. Um, so on one surge at 9 p.m., I feel my body start to push at the end of that surge. And the midwife, Emily, says to me after the surge is finished, she said, it seemed like you were pushing during that one, were you? And I was like, yes. My body just started pushing, so I'm just going with it. And she's like, excellent, just go with it. Do what your body needs it to do. Just listen to your body. Um, your body knows what to do. Um, they were absolutely fabulous in that respect. And um, so we decided, as I had in my first labor, um, in my first birth as well, I popped down the gas and air for the pushing stage because I felt like it distracts me when I'm pushing. Um, so I popped that down. And so on the very next surge, I follow my body and I push. Um, my, my body kind of pushes by itself. I just kind of follow my body's lead, if that makes sense. And I feel his body descend completely down the birth canal. I feel it, the complete motion. And um, his head, by the end of that surge, his head can be seen. Um, it is like partially out in that ring of fire, kind of his own, which is a bit intense. And I do pick back up the gas and air for a few puffs of that between the surges, because obviously I don't want to push between the surges. And... Um, at this stage, the midwives are like, they ask me again, they say, have you felt your waters go at any point? And I say, no, not that I've noticed. And they say, we can see his membranes like around his head. And I'm like, okay. So like, that's interesting. But then on the very next surge, so this is the third surge of pushing, <clears throat> um, I push his head out um, completely calmly. And it feels amazing once the head is out. In fact, I have a video of the head popping out, but I'm not going to include it here because it is a li little bit more graphic. Um, but you can hear how calm I am in that video as well. And Emily says, baby's head's out, still in his waters. And I'm like, you can hear me say back, he's on call. And I'm so shocked because I know how rare this is that a baby is born on call. Apparently, there's about one in 80,000 births. Apparently, it is more common with um, water births, though, I guess because of the pressure. I don't know, pressure difference. <laughs> but I'm absolutely shocked and I cannot believe it. And I reach down and I'm feeling his head, which is out of my body. And I'm feeling his head, which is cushioned by this balloon of waters and it is the most incredible thing ever and I mean I'm going to play you the video in a minute but this video this piece of video that I'm going to play you it is from this point until baby is born you can see how calm and shocked and amazed I am in this video I just can't believe it and I just keep saying to my husband Dan I'm like this is incredible this is incredible because it was, I just couldn't believe it. And then, um, so his head was out for that surge, still in his waters. And then on the very next contraction, I 
push the rest of him out and I pick him up and I put him on my chest and he was born at 9 17 p.m um after just 17 minutes of pushing 10 minutes of which the midwife noted to me afterwards that his head was either visible outside or outside my body for which I just find insane so yeah as I've picked him up um either I've broken his membranes or when as he's come out into the water he's maybe stretched out and his legs and arms have broken the sack or I've broken the sack picking him up not quite sure what happened but as I pick him up his sack break has break has broken and um, Emily removes the last of the membranes off his face which you'll see in this video as well um, and I just am in absolute shock and awe like I can't believe he's here I can't believe it was that easy yes I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the word easy <laughs> um, I can't believe how different my birth was from my first birth and I'm just in shock that we got this dream birth that we've been envisioning like it was absolutely incredible and I just can't believe it I'm on such a high I'm full of so much oxytocin and I just couldn't believe it um fun fact he was born to Moana my playlist had moved on to the Moana songs by that point so he was born to Moana how far I'll, I'll go which I find hilarious um, because Moana is obviously an ocean based film and he was born still in his waters which is referred to as a mermaid birth <laughs> so quite funny maybe he's gonna be a swimmer but yeah we are absolutely on a high can't believe how amazing the whole experience has been um, the midwives are amazing and being so wonderfully kind and supportive and you know saying how well I'd done and all of that um and they're just we're all just joining in on the joy like it was just so beautiful and it was just so happy it was just such a happy room to be in um his umbilical cord was a little bit short so I couldn't quite bring him fully up onto my chest so after just I think five minutes in the water we decide to get out so we can move to the sofa to deliver the placenta um, but as I stand up, it starts to come anyway. Um, so my placenta is delivered completely naturally while I'm semi-squatted over the pool about to step out. <laughs> um, seven minutes after delivery, which again, completely new experience for me because um, with my first, uh, I think it took 45 minutes and I had to have, well, I was told to have the injection to deliver the placenta um, because of blood loss. Um, that's another thing. My blood loss, by the way, was recorded at 400 milliliters, which is fine, absolutely normal. Um, so yeah, so I got out of the pool, laid on the sofa and just snuggled with my new baby. He latched on um, fairly quickly and had a really long breastfeed, um, which again didn't happen in my first birth. So it was just such a beautiful experience for me. Um, yeah, just on such a high for the rest of the evening. My husband bought me Vegemite toast, which I ate laying on the sofa while cuddling him. Um, and we had that golden hour of skin to skin. And we had wait for white with the umbilical cord before my husband cut the cord. Um, and I did have some second degree tearing, but it was able to be stitched completely at home. And absolutely no issues there. I just can't believe how well it all went. Um, I feel like I'm just going to keep repeating over and over how amazing it was and how I still can't believe how amazing the experience was. I'm just going to pop in that birth footage for you right now. Um, so yeah, enjoy. The waters. It's amazing. It's so rare. Oh. Do you want to try and get a picture of baby's head in the waters? Oh, um, Emily, I videoed that it? coming oh, out. Okay. <laughs> this is incredible. That feels wow. Oh, it's going to be a big difference. The what are you touching, Marnie? I'm touching my baby's head. Where the is, but the baby's head is out. Yes. Traction to push again. Ideally, because then you go yeah. in with your body. Yeah. And it always feels like you're waiting for but a bit of he's time. okay because he's in his water. Yeah, he's mm. fine. Oh my god. Oh my gosh.
down to this song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. And then you've got his head out of the wolf deck. Perfect. Hi, darling. Mm. I'm your mummy. So yeah, that was our positive home birth story here in the UK under NHS midwife care. Um, and I honestly cannot recommend uh, looking into a home birth if it would suit you and your family. Um, I cannot recommend it enough. If you have any kind of desire in your head that it could possibly be a choice for you um i would definitely say look into it i i don't think enough people know that home birth is a birthplace option under nhs care here in the uk i would just suggest looking into it if um, it is at all a choice that you might possibly want to make um, because it ended up being the best choice for me and my family um, me and my husband both can't stop saying how wonderful it was for both him, me, and baby. Um, yeah, it just definitely was the right decision for us, and I know it could be the right decision for a lot of other families out there. Not everyone, of course, but um, many people, if you don't realise that it's an option, yeah. But yeah, go and have a look into it, and um, thank you for listening to my birth story.